coming out today, and uh, I'm going to make this a little short, and I'm going to hand it off to somebody else. But uh, we've got a case that we've been working on uh, along with uh, Marshall County Sheriff's Office, uh, their task force, Safe Streets Task Force, uh, our task force, OSPD, and uh, if I've left anybody out, then maybe Michael can fill us in. Uh, this has turned out to be a really good case. It's it's continuing and it's it's early in this case, and so I'm sure there's going to be a lot more happens when we continue to work on this. And I can't say enough about everybody working together the way we have on this because it went into two different counties, probably three. And but at this time, I'm going to go ahead and let uh, the commander of the task force. In the Cab County, uh, Chief Deputy Michael Evans, and I'm going to let him talk. So, Michael. Uh, this, this has been about a six month investigation. Uh, like the Sheriff said, from Marshall County Drug Task Force, uh, FBI Safe Treats Task Force, uh, Boyas Police Department. Uh, there's been several law enforcement agencies involved. Uh, you know, along with the, the drugs, that we, the illegal drugs that we got, there was about 10,000 cash also seized. Uh, Goes to show, you know, they, they probably disrupted the, the drug trade in, in three or four different counties just with this one bust. Uh, I appreciate all of them working together and, and, and staying after it and uh, doing well. They did a good job. Questions? So, exactly, um, how much did you guys find? I think there was about a pound and a quarter methamphetamine, uh, there was some cocaine, and uh, marijuana also, and then two weapons. And this is from? How? South end of the county, okay. uh, Kilpatrick area. So this is a collective effort of the community, not just one particular person? Yes. Um, how, who was arrested? And uh, we have the names over there. I, hold on, Mr. Mitchell, I'll have to edit some. Thank you. And I probably won't be able to pronounce them. Okay. Michael Andreas. Can you spell his name? M I C. I'll give you one of these, or you need to spell it for you. It's uh, Michael Andreas, uh, M I C H A E L A N D R E S. And is he currently both in the. No, he is in, I uh, think, is he in federal custody? No, it's Boaz. Okay. Uh, Pedro Andreas, P E D R O A N D R E S. Pedro Pasquale Andreas. Can you spell Pasquale? P A S C U A L. And then what charges are these, all three of these men facing? Yeah. Uh, Pedro Pasquale Andres is being charged with trafficking meth, uh, possession of marijuana first, possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, and possession of cocaine with intent to distribute. Uh, Michael, Pedro Andres, and Pedro Gomez Andres both been in charge of one count of traffic and methamphetamine. Uh, do they live in Boaz or do they have county? Pedro Pasquale and Michael Pedro live uh, in Boaz, and Pedro Gomez Andres lives, he has an address of either. Uh, okay. Can you guys talk about, uh, there's a lot of different agencies involved, what exactly, how exactly you all work together in this whole investigation? Well, just, just a lot of coordinating, you know, uh, we, we uh, rely on the FBI and the Safe Streets Task Force, you know, uh, they kind of, well, they helped us from the start to the ending of this case, uh, just, just different coordinating and, and working through different organizations and uh, just a lot of work. Uh, when and where were they all arrested? Uh, the, right near the county line, uh, and this was last week. I don't remember the exact day. On the 16th. 16th. 16th, they were arrested. Do any of them have bond? Are they still in jail? I think they're still in jail. Uh, that FBI is up here from Birmingham, correct? Uh, can you talk to me about their involvement in... Well, as I said a while ago, they, they, they started when this investigation started, our drug, our drug unit uh, made contact with them and, and they got Safe Streets involved and it just went from there. Uh, 
You guys said that this involved a couple of counties that could stop some drug trafficking in those counties. Can you kind of explain? Marshall, Marshall County and Edelwald County, this all happened on the southern end of our county, or in the Kilpatrick area, and you've got Edelwald County that's not far, and you've got Marshall County that I mean, it's all wrapped up together. So I'm sure we'll put it down for those. Do you think there's anyone else that they were involved with? That you this, is, this is still an ongoing investigation. You know, the, I mean, this could continue for another year, another two years, and we, we follow wherever it carries us. Hey, can you give us the specific amounts again? How much? Um, it was a pound and a quarter of mail. Uh, what's my mom going to say? Half a pound of marijuana and just some small, uh, small amount of cocaine. No. Street value on these drugs? Um, just a rough estimate on the uh, the meth is probably around. Thirty-five to forty thousand dollars on the bed, uh, probably three, four thousand dollars of marijuana, and just a few hundred dollars of cocaine. And you said there's outside two thousand dollars found along with that. Ten thousand dollars cash. That money is turned over, and as uh, soon as any, any law enforcement deals with that much cash, that is is turned over to the proper authority and, and deposited in the bank account. Uh, you know that that money will be uh, will file for seizure on that. That that money, uh, and it will probably be distributed between the agencies. And you said Marshall and who else? Oh, Marshall County, uh, their drug unit, Boaz, Boaz Police Department, uh, and FBI Safe Streets Task Force. What about these guns? Do they legally have these guns? Do we have the owner of these guns? Are they stolen? Uh, you, you never, they're, they're not stolen. No, they're not stolen. Uh, you never know unless you can trace back and see. Uh, a lot of times in the drug, drug world, you'll, you'll never know who actually, who, who they got the guns from. A lot of times when we recover guns like this, uh, you know, people that, that have firearms in their house, most of the time they never write the serial number down. So. A lot of guns may be stolen, but because the serial number wasn't written down when they filed a report, it does not show up as stolen when we run it, uh, you know, to check it. And he was talking about the money that was seized. When we have money that is seized like that, uh, an amount like that, or any amount, it, it goes in a bank, it's deposited, and that money, it may take five years till the case is completely over. And, you know, if we win the case, then the money is divided between the agencies, you know, to use for, you know, the fight, continue fighting drugs. And if it, you know, if it is, if we lose the case for some reason, then the money will be returned to that person uh, with interest. So we have to hold that money in a bank uh, interest bearing account until that. And that's what we do with the money. Uh, do any of these men have a prior criminal? Yes, I think uh, one of them, uh, I think Michael just got out of prison, right? He just got out. Uh, usually usually in the drug trade, like this, they usually always have some type of criminal record. So, can you talk about are these past, is their record related to drugs? Yes. Five minutes? Uh, I don't think so, not all that. So, you said it could take up to five years to say that there's really no time limit with this. No. Uh, it's, it's just according to when it comes to court. Uh, I've seen cases take up to five years and the money, you know, we disperse back to us and then given to the other agencies. And it's always in an interest bearing account until, the, you know, until it's, it's completed. If convicted, how much time are these men facing? Well, it's according to what they've been charged with before if they have they have a, other drug-related cases, and this one, they just got out of prison. I mean, you know, he could be looking at several years. So, do you know if they're, they're illegal? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea at this time? So we don't know if they're U.S. citizens, if they were living in Boaz legally? Not at not this time, we don't. You know, we'll, have, we'll have ICE or immigration to check that for us. And if they were illegal, what would be the problem? If, if they are illegal, then they will be here, they will be in jail until, you know, until the case.
case comes to trial. And then, you know, sometimes the courts will allow them on. And that happens a lot. You know, there's not anything we can do about that. But. And I know we've talked about it several times, but would you say there's a growing drug issue in the county? There, there's a drug issue in every county almost in the United States. It don't matter where you go. That is one of the biggest problems that all the, you know, police departments, uh, you know, sheriffs that they deal with on a daily basis. That's just, that's just part of being in the United States. You know, America, Americans have a craving for drugs. So, you know, as long as, the, as long as it's out there, they're going to come from somewhere to sell it to us. Talk about how important it is catching these guys, getting these drugs in your residence. Well, any time that you remove, it don't matter what amount it is, if you can remove it off the street, and that, that doesn't go to anybody else plus, you know, some uh, juvenile might end up with this. So it always, it's always good to get any amount, especially an amount like this. And, you know, marijuana, you know, a lot of people, you know, when you talk to them, you know, you'll ask them, uh, are you on dope? No, I smoke pot. Well, pot is dope, you know, and it is a gateway to drug. I don't care what anybody says about it. It leads to stronger stuff. You know, anybody that smokes pot, they're eventually going to be on cocaine. They're going to be on heroin. They're going to be on meth. Uh, most everybody that we arrest, that's where they started out. 